Hey guys, welcome back to InventBox, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do some basic 2D movement animation. Under New File, I'm going to click 2D Animation, and this will bring us into the two-dimensional animation tab. At first it might seem a little bit complicated with all these different options you have around here, but once you get the hang of it, a lot of these options really don't seem quite as menacing. A lot of them you don't use too often, and you only learn to use them whenever you have to start making more complex animations. To do some simple ones, I'm going to go into File, Import, SVG. I'm going to be using SVG files. Now in the folder, I'm going to import three parts of my logo. I'm going to part, import Logo 1, and as soon as I import that, I'm going to go down in Scene Collection, and then where it says Logo 1, I'll click on Curve, and if I hit S on the keyboard, and then 20, it'll scale it up 20. I'll import the second part. Do the same thing, select it, scale it up by 20, and do the third part. Select it and scale it up by 20. Now we have all of our parts imported. Holding shift, I'm going to select them all. Click R on the keyboard, and then after R, X, and then 90. And that'll rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. By hitting zero on the number pad, it'll bring us into the rendering viewport or the camera. And we'll drag this down into the position that we want and to make it a little bit easier, you can see my arrows are down here right now. I'm going to right click on this, set origin, and then origin to geometry. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. Now get this roughly centered. It doesn't need to be perfect for what I'm doing. That's good enough. Now we're actually ready to start the animation. It's very simple, especially the way that they have it laid out. Blender has done a great job. So right now we're on frame number one, and we're going to set keyframes at the different parts where we want the objects to be. So I have it selected on keyframe number one, and if we want to change the frame, you can change it to 10 just by clicking on it and changing to what frame you want. I'm going to have it at frame number one right now. Click on the record button, which is this square with a circle in it. Now that recording is on, we want to set the first keyframe and frame number one where these objects are right now. So I'm going to do this individually and all I need to do is click on one of these arrows, move to the next one, click on one of the arrows, move to the next one and click on one of the arrows. Now there's a keyframe set on each one of these on frame one in this position. Now I'm going to change the end here to 40. And I'll change my frame that I'm on right now to 40. Now all we need to do is click G on the keyboard and we can move these to wherever we want. If I move these to the four edges here, or the three edges, now if I click the play button you can see they move out to where we set them to go. If you want to make this a little bit more complicated we can change the frame to 20 and then we can move them around at frame 20 and this is going to reset those keyframes at different points so you'll see whenever I play it now it gets a little bit more complicated and you can keep setting keyframes if you set them every 10 frames and then you moved it differently so if you have a start frame and an end frame it's going to move between those in the shortest way that it can but if you want to reroute it you have to go in between those keyframes and tell it where to go so by doing that we can get more complicated and complex animations so I'm going to stop here and just show you how to animate this. So right now this is not a viewable file. I can't send this to somebody. So this is just a preview of what it's going to look like. While I have this all animated, I'm going to go into the output tab. And right now we're going to remember to turn off the record button. It seems like you'll always forget to turn this off and you'll start moving things around and you don't want to start setting keyframes and you're going to start setting keyframes. So as soon as you're done with the animation, make sure you turn off the record. Now in the output tab, I'm going to select where I want it to output each individual frame. It's going to render each individual frame as an image. So I'm going to input it. I would recommend having a frame folder where you're going to put all the frames. And I'm going to change the file format 
instead of ping, I'm going to change it to open EXR. That's going to be a little bit more high resolution. If you're doing anything in color, make sure that the color is going to be RGBA. Now that we have everything selected, we have it where we want to go, we have the correct file type, we're going to go ahead and render and then animation. And now this is going to go ahead and render each render frame. I am using EV rendering system, which does it very quickly. And it's only a 40 frame animation, so this is going to go really quick. You can see it's already done right now, so that's all 40 frames. Now to compile this into a video that we can watch, we can go File, New, Video Editing. If you want, you can save this file before you go out of it, just in case you want to keep it. Now in Video Editing, I'm going to go into the Add tab, Image Sequence, and then go to that same folder where we just saved all of our frames. By hitting A on the keyboard, it will select all of them at once, and we can add image strip. Now we can get an idea of what that's going to look like, but first we want to change our end frame to the amount of frames that's in this video, which is 40. We're going to play it, and now you can get an, an idea of what this is going to look like. It's going to be really choppy right now at this point, because it hasn't done its final rendering. Now that we have everything how we want it, we're going to change the output, of course, where we're going to want it to save, which is going to be close to that folder, except, and make sure you change the file format to FFmpeg video. That's very important. If you don't change it to one of the movie files, it's not going to save it in a viewable video format. Now that we have that done, we can go ahead and for a second time go to render animation, and this will also take much quicker. It'll be about the same time as rendering each one of those frames. And once this is done, we're going to have a viewable MKV video. So right now, that's all 40 frames done. We can now go into our file viewer. And in our SVG folder, now we have our viewable MKV. So if I open this, you can see we have a very smooth animation here. It worked great, and it was very simple. We did this all in one cut. And it just it's very simple, especially for this just basic animation. It, it's it's they've done a great job on how they've made it simple. If you want to do more complicated animations, that's for another video. But I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.